Welcome to DVR Club, the AV Club's TV recap show. I'm television editor Eric Adams, and alongside me... I'm Kyle Ryan, senior editor. And we're here to talk about the premiere of HBO's new political satire, The Brink. Uh, going right into to top storylines, which is just the storyline that hangs heavy over this entire series, this entire episode. Uh, the world is nearly at war. Uh, there's unrest in Pakistan, and there's only one person who can stop it, and that's Jack Black. Jack Black is a dopey, doughy, uh, pot-smoking... Now you say this character is being played by Jack Black! <laughs> yeah, right. But he's going way <laughs> out of his range here. You got me by the short hairs. Go ahead and squeeze. Lemonade my balls. So the series kind of splits its time between Jack Black between the Secretary of State, who's played by Tim Robbins, and then a couple of fighter pilots. Uh, Kyle, what do you think about the, the setup for the show? I think the setup's actually really interesting. The first episode's really briskly paced. The, the, it's pretty easy to follow. I mean, it, it's sort of vague in that, like, oh, Pakistan is uh, on the verge of something, and then it quickly escalates into a situation that could bring the whole world into war. So it's cleverly set up. Mm -hmm. It's got... Uh, a lot of great people in it, and then the problem starts. <laughs> I will say, though, that briskness carries over to the, the visual style of the show very well. Uh, I was worried, you know, it's a, it's a show where a lot of people are going to be sitting around a lot of conference tables, <laughs> uh, but, you know, there's, there's nice camera work where things, you know, when they're in the situation room, the camera kind of, like, scans over the tables. There's a lot of walk lot and of talks. Tight, oh, there's a lot of tight shots on people's faces. Yeah. And... It does look and feel brisk, but like you said, it's got some problems which we'd like to address in a new segment we're calling Obvious Comparisons. Uh, now, Kyle, when you and I were talking about the show, you brought up uh, another HBO comedy which just ended its fourth season uh, this past week, Veep. Um, does it compare favorably or negatively to Veep? I think all things compare unfavorably to Veep. I mean, it, it, that is a tough show to top. So it's curious to me that HBO is going into an area that is so close to what Veep does. And the jokes just can't, they just can't compete. It smells like a coup d'etat. Led by who? I can't tell you that. I'm the president. No, I mean, we don't know. It's very difficult to ever try to compete with the level, with the volume, with the speed, with the precision of, of Veep's joke telling. No, and you know, you can say that Veep has this unnatural rhythm to it because it's just so sharp. Everyone's very pointed with their barbs and they're all perfectly <laughs> timed and everything. Uh, so you could say like this is a more natural sounding show. It, it's weird, the, the word I, I was using for it was slack, which feels strange because the show, like you said, moves so quickly. And, and it's funny because there, there are a, a couple laughers in it for me, but not, I spend most of the time just watching it, mm -hmm. you know, whereas I feel like with Veep, and, it, and, and it's unfair to this show that like you, you want to just keep going back to Veep where like so much of it is so funny, but these shows exist in these worlds that are overlapping and it's, like, I, I can't help but compare. The Brink doesn't do itself any further favors by establishing itself and its premise within the grounds of one of the greatest screen comedies ever made, uh, Dr. Strangelove. Like, this is a modern day war on terror, Dr. Strangelove, and it's very difficult to get out of shadows that are that long. But again, it, it, it does have some, some solid stuff in it. Maybe that's what we should talk about next. Yeah, it has some redeeming qualities. Uh, talking about existing in long shadows, I think the episode MVP uh, standing in a very long shadow, that being the shadow cast by the very tall Tim Robbins. Uh, Mary Beth Monroe, who viewers will recognize from Workaholics, uh, she did a few cameos on Parks and Recreation. She's very active in, in sketch uh, circles. She's a great straight man opposite Tim Robbins, uh, and it's it's a bit of a departure from her workaholics character, right? right? Because on workaholics, she's she's also stern, but she's very cutting in workaholics, where she's always just like just taking those guys down. Uh, and on this show, she's just more like put upon. Did you read through the binders I sent you? Unless they were encrypted on the vaginal walls of an Asian call girl, no. 
What binders? The ones marked Secretary of State on the covers. She's somebody I was really glad to see in this. You yeah. Know, I, I was really happy that she was in this. Uh, same, I, I would say the same for uh, Asif Mandvi, yeah. uh, who plays the uh, Rafiq, who's a driver for the U.S. Embassy in, in Pakistan. Um, you know, just a lot of great bit players who you're kind of familiar with if you watch as much comedy TV as, as you or I do. Uh, it's always nice to see them getting getting a little profile lift. You know, we've, we've suffered no dearth of Jack Black over the years, or it, it's good to see Tim Robbins in this too, uh, even though like his character feels a little flat right now, but uh, you know, again, it's the first episode, so it's got plenty of time to build. It is only the first episode. There are still nine more episodes to go. Uh, here in Speculation Corner, we like to guess where the show may be heading next. Uh, but I'd like to pose a different question, Kyle. Do you think you're going to watch all of The Brink? Yeah, I will. Uh, there's enough funny in it and, and possibilities for it to be to keep me on it, it'd really have to take a take a turn quickly. What's interesting to me is to see where this is gonna go because it goes from zero to 60 so quickly in 30 minutes. And then I was like, is this like a, a limited run series? Like, I, I And then I, I was shocked to see that it was going 10 episodes. Well, I think you'll see in the, the coming episodes, and I say this as, as someone who's watched half of the first season so far, that there are a lot of obstacles that you have to uh, jump over and move around uh, in order to avoid mutually assured destruction. Uh, and uh, Tim Robbins has, has a lot of work ahead of him. So I would guess he does. So he should probably stop drinking so much and stop fucking so much, even though he's not going to because this character is like Tim Robbins' comedy fantasy of, of Bill Clinton. <laughs> well, whether or not you'll be back for more episodes of The Brink, we'll be back with more episodes of DVR Club here on the AV Club. I'm Eric Adams. I'm Kyle Ryan. Bye!